Welcome to the respiratory system, and just you could say that about this about any body system in the human body. This is a very detailed system. It does have some physiology with it. My first video here is going to be me just going through what are some of the basic parts of the respiratory system and a little bit about vocal cords. So here's a nice little overview. The reason that we breathe oxygen, you have to have oxygen to for cellular respiration to take place. In other words, for cells to take oxygen and food energy from our diet and convert that into ATP. Oxygen is called the last electron acceptor. It's got to be there at the end of this very long reaction to, uh, to get reduced. And when it does get reduced, um, then ATP is produced. So it's very important. Oxygen is very high in the lungs. It's very low in the blood going through the lungs. So by diffusion, oxygen moves from the lungs, from the alveoli, into the bloodstream. There's a very permeable membrane there. At the same time, carbon dioxide, which is low in the lungs, because you breathe that off every time you exhale, water and carbon dioxide, it's very low in the lungs, so carbon dioxide, which is a byproduct of cells producing ATP from cell respiration, uh, carbon dioxide is very high in blood going through the lungs. And it moves into the lungs, and that part is exhaled. And then once the blood goes, leaves the lungs, it's high in oxygen, it starts going through body tissues, which are low in oxygen because they use that for cell respiration. Um, then oxygen diffuses from the blood down into tissue cells, and carbon dioxide actually moves from the cells into the blood, and then it goes back to the heart, and the heart pumps it back to the lungs again. During inhalation, air containing oxygen passes through the nose and mouth to the lungs. During exhalation, air containing carbon dioxide and other waste passes out the same path. This process of moving air in and out of the lungs is called pulmonary ventilation. In the lungs, oxygen travels from tiny air sacs called alveoli into the bloodstream. At the same time, carbon dioxide travels from the bloodstream into the alveoli for elimination. This process of gas exchange between the lungs and the blood is called external respiration. Internal respiration exchanges gases between the blood and the body's cells. So here are some terms. Um, ventilation means moving air in and out of the lungs. Uh, that's what a ventilator does. The machine it pumps the lungs up and down, gets, gets the blood and gets oxygen inside the, uh, the lungs. External respiration is gas exchange between the blood and the alveoli and lung tissue. Inside the lungs, oxygen from the air is exchanged for waste carbon dioxide from the bloodstream. This process of external respiration takes place in hundreds of millions of microscopic sacs called alveoli. Oxygen from inhaled air diffuses from the alveoli into the pulmonary capillaries surrounding them, and is pumped through the bloodstream. Carbon dioxide from oxygen depleted blood diffuses from the capillaries into the alveoli and is expelled through exhalation. Okay, I hope that helped. Uh, internal respiration uh, is kind of the uh, same process, but it's when blood is going through body tissues and unloading oxygen into cells, which have a low oxygen level, and it's picking up carbon dioxide. So to start out with, you can divide the respiratory system into the upper and lower, and you may have heard this, you can have an upper respiratory infection or a lower respiratory infection. The upper respiratory tract includes the nose, nasal cavity, sinuses, pharynx, and larynx. That whole area is pretty much the same. Uh, and look, sometimes a book will divide it right around in here as far as upper and lower going to use the diagrams that we use for this course, uh, which designate larynx being part of the upper respiratory tract. The trachea, which is windpipe made of hyaline cartilage, bronchial tree, and lungs, and we'll get to all that. All right, so, um, so here we go. Here's our first, and then I have some pictures to show you as well. I'm going to make this a little bigger. So nasal cavity, 
external nares or nose so air you know this is the nose so air goes through the nostrils across the nasal cavity pharynx larynx that's all the upper tract um, the trachea which is the windpipe these are called the first and second well this is the primary bronchi first branches and then they get smaller from there that's the lower respiratory tract all right let me bounce over to here real quick so that's a, actually a pretty good picture um, like it says respiration occurs on a macroscopic level and then you have gas exchange you saw some examples of that um, ATP production carbon dioxide generation forming carbonic acid we'll get to that at the very end and uh, basically the respiratory system is there to bring oxygen into the blood and to get rid of carbon dioxide which Carbon dioxide in blood is considered a toxic gas, and it's part of this formula, and it can lead to acidic blood if carbon dioxide is not being ventilated or, or exhaled uh, correctly. So we're going to start here um, next. Okay, we'll start there, actually. All right, I'm going to use this picture in your outline. So first thing on anatomy, nose contains uh, openings called nares our nostrils that act as passageways so that would be the opening to the outside the nose is basically a filter it's not very open uh, the openings are not very big this is the nasal cavity if you remember from the bone section what are called concha bones there is actually an upper middle and lower or superior middle inferior and actually right here uh, sorry about my mouse the superior is here the middle is here and this is the inferior nasal concha bones uh, anyway, and they're covered by a mucous membrane that is moist, so the air coming through here, it picks up some moisture so it doesn't draw the back of the throat out. So it says there the nasal mucosa, which is this layer on top, and then there are the bones, uh, the functions. Uh, it does act as a passageway, the nose. Um, warms and cools the air. It humidifies it because once it goes across this area, it picks up water molecules. And then this whole area here is called the pharynx, and it's actually divided into three sections. Um, acts as a filter for debris from the air. That's a great, great, um, what do you call it? a great uh, function of the nose. Air that enters the nose is filtered, moistened, and warmed by structures in the respiratory mucosa. Coarse hairs filter out large dust particles. Seromucous glands secrete antimicrobial substances and mucus that traps and moistens the air. Blood flowing through capillaries in the mucosa warms the air. The filtered, moistened, and warmed air then continues toward the trachea. Now, I'm going to see um I wish this was a little bigger. Uh but uh, see this? This is the pharynx, or pharynx. I've heard it two ways. So there's the nasal cavity. This is called the nasopharynx, or pharynx. The oropharynx is the area behind the mouth. And the laryngopharynx is the area right in here. And you can kind of see it there. That's, and this is called the epiglottis. That's where the larynx is, which is where the vocal cords would be. And then past that, it becomes the... Um, esophagus <laughs> um, in fact right here is a little passage here's the where it where it splits this front part would be the trachea the part in the back is the esophagus so it, it has three regions so this is behind the nose oro which is behind the mouth and laryngo is pretty much right above or right where the larynx would be located it's where the adam's apple is found um, so, like it says here, it is a passageway for food. Well, it's a passageway for food, water, and air. And air, okay, food moving from the oral cavity to the esophagus or for air passing between the nasal cavity into the larynx. The larynx, which uh, is divided into sections as well. Let me see, uh, I'm going to use a little better picture. And then lab, of course, we have better... We have diagrams for this whole thing. So here is the larynx. Now, um, there are cartilages associated with it. 
Here's the hyoid bone up here, and then the epiglottis, which is this flap on the back. Here's the thyroid cartilage. Um, this little area right below that is called the cricoid. This is the trachea. They are C rings made of hyaline cartilage. All this is made of hyaline cartilage. If, uh, if an emergency airway is needed to, if somebody has an obstruction and an emergency airway needs to be created, it's usually in that little area right here between the thyroid and the cricoid. Uh, on the back, this is, uh, these are called the arytenoid cartilage and these little beak looking things on the top are the, um, corniculate cartilage. Um, and then like it's saying here, here's the trachea in the back. So I can show you a better picture of that later. All right, so we're gonna talk about the vocal cords now. Um, consist of two pairs of folds. Now we're gonna be looking like you're looking down somebody's throat. The upper pair of folds are called false vocal cords. And then there's some thin cords on each side of the faults that are called the true cords. They're actually involved with sound production. And the opening between them is called the glottis. And then that would go down into the trachea, which would go down to the lungs. So this would be like, a, pretend you're looking down somebody's gullet. See the white? Those are the true vocal cords. And these big flaps on the sides are vestibular, meaning they have no function. That's the false vocal cords. And now this kind of looks like a a half unicorn thing, but see that opening? This is the glottis. Somebody who gets bagged or a ventilator is going to go right between there. So the white bands on each side, those are the true vocal cords. They're involved with sound production. These flaps on the side are the faults. Now, a couple of points about how that works. Air going across this causes vibrations, and that produces a sound. Not a word, but a sound. Um, and so the first part here, the greater the pressure of air, the louder the sound. I hope that makes sense. So the more air is going across these, the louder the sound would be. The pitch, in other words, um, yeah, tone. Some people have a high voice. Some people can sing and hit these high tones. And then you have people that have deeper voices. It depends on the amount of vibrations of the vocal cords. The bigger the vocal cords, the slower the vibrations, the lower the voice. Testosterone causes this area to develop more than estrogen does. So on average, men have a lower voice than uh, females because that area just develops a little bit more. Testosterone causes that. If the cords are pulled tight by muscles, they vibrate more rapidly, result in a higher pitched sound if they record, excuse me, the the cords vibrate slower results in a lower pitch sound. And like I was saying, men usually have thicker vocal cords than women. And so as a result, men usually have a deeper voice. Phonation is the production of sound by structures in the upper respiratory tract. During exhalation, air passes from the lungs through the larynx. Muscles in the larynx can act to move the arytenoid cartilages that then move the cords. The cords are pushed together and air passes between them in such a way as to make them vibrate, creating sound. Greater tension in the vocal folds creates more rapid vibrations and higher pitched sounds. Lower tension causes slower vibration and a lower pitch. Sounds can also be altered by other factors. High pressure creates louder sound, longer folds produce lower pitch sounds, and shorter folds produce higher pitch. Structures in the oral and nasal cavities can also modify the sounds. I'm going to start there next.